only do carry out tasks which is laid down for it, a repetitive task. So it will not have its own intelligence going forward. Um, so um, let's look at the poll right now. There's a small questionnaire for you all. Let's see, I will give you um, two minutes to respond. Um, so just want you all to think of um, what could possibly be the um, answers. Uh, what, um, what is RPA uh, about? What, what is your feedback? I see, I, I, um, I see a lot of you responding on RPA is platform independent. Okay, very good. And uh, what do you think that uh, can a bot handle more than one process at a time? Interesting um, feedback coming in. Three more seconds. Anybody who had not attempted? Right. So um, we have 69% who has commented saying that RPA processes are platform independent, which is actually the correct answer. Um, they're not plat platform dependent. That is one of the biggest advantages of uh, having RPA as a tool. And um, yes, RPA process can be ex um, executed on remote machines. And um, at a time, only sing um, the last point is actually not correct because you could have multiple processes being executed at a given time using RPA. Only thing you need to prioritize and sort of schedule the jobs, how the program would execute them. Okay, that's. Very good. So let's move on to the next area. Um, so let's look at um, why RPA, why is it so important or what are the key elements of uh, RPA? Um, first thing is, or, or one of the biggest advantage of this technology is the high efficiency. This is equivalent to having a virtual staff member or, or a virtual digital resource, which is um, available for you to carry out your task 24 by seven. Who doesn't go on leave, no annual leave, sick leave, or um, over time required. So you, you have that availability and, and then um, sort of an additional resource available to you. And then it would strictly go by the business rules set forth. So there's any a no room for things to go wrong unless the bot program is edited. So that you would have assurance that business rules are being 100% complied to, which is another advantage. And the average um, sort of uh, a bot would operate um, on a particular process area roughly to cover two to five full-time employees work, worth of uh, employees work um, can be covered by a bot at a given time. And the other advantage is um, since it's a set down rules and, and a program that execute, the bot is gonna execute, we don't need to have any training time. You can easily swap between a, 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 handle, a bot handling one process a completely different area because once the program is being set forth with the detailed steps, the bot takes it up and run. So there won't be hardly any uh, training or no training required. And the other uh, advantage is compatibility with existing IT system setup. So you don't need to spend a um, lot of time developing or changing your existing systems because it can run as whatever the setup is. Let's say, for example, you want to um, compile a customer information that, um, extracted from, uh, from your CRM for some uh, purpose. You can program the bot to log into the system, extract the key information that you laid out, 
and then extract it to you. So it doesn't mean that you are changing your CRM application at all. It's just that you are adding a virtual uh, staff member, giving credentials, so it logs in and extract your details. And it, it can interact with multiple systems and sources, like I explained earlier. It, it's platform independent, and then it can um, uh, interact with any type of applications as well as um, software. And then the implementation cycle is far much faster compared to um, rolling out uh, any IT system application. I'm sure majority of uh, you being project managers must be, have experienced implementing or been affected due to IT system implementations. So considering that, the time taken, uh, um, this is a very um, sort of a shorter life cycle when it comes to RPA implementation. And the other uh, advantage is the greater quality and the performance. Um, it, does, it eliminates the human error. Since it's a program which is running based on very strict rules um, set laid upon, the bot would be following exactly the same steps. So you, there's hardly no room for any human errors. And also, um, when you couple it up with, like, let's say that somebody is working on a tedious manual repetitive task, and you take it away from that staff member and allocate it to a bot, and give the staff member something um, which is involving more subjective decision making and sort of enhancing their abilities as well, that's gonna increase your staff satisfaction as well. And then um, improving the compliance as well as the auditability because you can trace what a bot does within the program. There, there is a comprehensive audit log where you can trace back. In the event there's any error that happens in the execution, it's easy to trace back during in the program. So it makes um, your life easy in, in terms of uh, tracking things down as well. And then, um, Easy execution um, and repetitive processes. It's automating the steps based on set rules. I have been highlighting this because this is a, one of the biggest advantages of having RPA. And then it handles transactions with higher volumes, which is the tedious task when it comes to this manual repetitive task, is when it's in higher volumes, you would need more staff. So the more volume it is, it, it is a very good suitable candidate for having RPA. Um, and then uh, the other, um, Advantage is the reduced operational cost because um, when, you, when you are implementing RPA, one thing is the time saving. So instead of, I'm sorry, instead of having so many staff members allocated to carry out repetitive manual tasks, you could um, have a bot which itself is going to be you saving you the cost of the extra salaries and the other perks that would go into a normal full time staff member. And then over time, if you need more um, bots to handle, depending on the execution and, and implementation areas, the return you would get is higher as well. Of course, these two percentages would greatly depend on where you're gonna implement it and what is your objective of uh, implementing it as well. But the higher voluminous uh, transactions there is, the, the return would be higher for you as well. And the other, other is increased flexi flexibility in terms of uh, you can schedule the bot to run at, at any given time. It can operate over weekends or midnight, whatever the time that is. And you could redeploy, like I said, like you know, if you um, implement a bot for a particular process, that would not stop you from redeploying it to any other process areas as well, which is different to having a human resource. Whereas, like you know, if you're changing, then um, the problem uh, concerns over uh, their skill levels and whether they're about to take the job or not. There are different concerns coming in, which sort of addresses here. And uh, it can um, execute multiple processes parallelly. This is one of the questions we uh, put out in the previous poll. Uh, it can process uh, uh, simultaneously as well as uh, easy, and uh, you can add uh, more workers or digital workers to your workforce. Right, so in, in summary, RPA um, is suitable to um, implement into process areas we're looking at not just um, the point of replacing a human resource. It's more of like, you know, how best you could utilize that human resource to focus on more important tasks, which are like uh, more tasks that needs to uh, be carried out using emotional intelligence, reasoning, judgment, which you cannot be assigning it to a robot. So that you free up the time and give um, the, these um, sort of uh, cognitive abilities um, to be carried out by a human resource. Okay, so enough of me talking. Let's see how a bot really works. So we've got an example for you where a bot is um, extracting, um, generating uh, customer receipts 
um, using details which is uh, fed it in an Excel sheet. So you see um, uh, the uh, bot is downloading the payment Excel sheet and it's uh, logging into the Oracle um, application uh, of this particular instance. Just like any other uh, staff member, if, if you have had a designated uh, human resource, they would be also doing like this, where you allocate a um, um, unique user ID password, just like any other user. But only difference is this is a virtual staff or, or a bot carrying out this transaction. So you would see it, this video is not a fast tracked uh, video. This is the pace of uh, how things have been happening. So the bot is copying details from the uh, Excel sheet and then entering it into the um, ERP application. The correct columns, the correct uh, fields are being um, entered. So this is um, where the uh, defining the rule base is very important when you're implementing a um, software, this automation. And then it will go on um, like, you know, up, up until the point where the process needs to stop, generally tinting um, the receipt. One more thing um, I need to add up here is that the, I was talking about the efficiency uh, of uh, having this uh, bot carrying out the task. But if your IT systems are very slow, and, and or let's say the browsers, uh, web applications are very slow, then that delay would add into the efficiency which we are trying to achieve through a bot. Because this is equivalent to you having a, a human resource sitting and doing this work. So the time it takes to load a particular application or, or browser would anyway add up to the timing of completing each cycle. So having a faster response time within the applications is as a key. I hope it's clear. I just wanted you all to um, get a feel of how a bot works um, uh, when it comes to um, real life uh, Im implementation. Right, so let's have a look at, we were talking about having uh, robots implemented across, but what can this robot do? What sort of tasks can be allocated for these um, robots? So there are different um, um, functions that they could do um, with the underlying rule of having these being repetitive and consistent. So it can log into multiple applications using the uh, credentials assigned to it, it can sending out uh, emails and uh, um, sort of, uh, I'm sorry, I think we are having the poll running. Right. Okay, we'll wait till you finish the poll. What do you think that RPA can be used for? Which areas uh, of business processes can it be? Think it's only for banking processes or like only for um Here we see 36 percent 36 members have uh, responded Forty-one members have responded. We are waiting for two more to come up. Oh, yeah. Right. So let's look at the poll results. So I think. 
43, 64% of the participants um, say that uh, it's for automating business processes. And um, few have responded saying it's, it's for banking processes. Actually, RP can be used for any business process. So um, answer B is the correct answer. So let's look at within these business processes, what can a bot do? What sort of activities can we rely on for them to carry out? So, um, like I said, they could log into um, web, web or enterprise IT applications. It can send out emails on predefined rule, or it can um, re receive emails and carry out uh, um, certain um, activities based on the rules defined. So, if it's to um, like you know look up for certain web data from the web, reading and writing to databases, making certain calculations, sending forms to like extracting data from documents, writing the, back to documents and uh, opening emails, attachments, carrying out basic um, if-then uh, decisions based on the rules, and then moving files and folders. So these are some of the examples of what a bot could carry out, uh, different activities within a process, which they could carry out as part of an end-to-end um, automation. Um, when you're looking at um, identify now when I say that you can use RPA for these, these areas, the benefits are so much, but then uh, the question might come to you thinking, if I, I have a problem area, but I don't know whether that is something suitable for RPA. Because um, th that's a very good uh, key decision we need to make to make sure that we pick the right process or, or the uh, business area to implement RPA. So I believe that this is something that I use during my implementations in order to ju uh, judge whether a particular process area is something good or suitable for RPA. First is you need to see, is it uh, having any repetitive task? Is, is, it, uh, is there a higher number of uh, staff allocated to perform this task before because of the higher volume? And then uh, can, can, does, uh, do you have extra staff to handle seasonal loads, which is impossible to have like, you know, uh, manage with the existing staff? Anything that you could, uh, can you map these uh, inputs and the process steps into from beginning to end with predefined uh, rules? And then um, is it possible for a bot to initiate this process based on these steps? And then we could like, you know, schedule it like once in every month or beginning of the day, something like that. And then um, is the process stable? And, and then it, it does not change frequently. Because uh, like I said, we are giving the instructions to a bot based on a defined set of rules or set of steps to follow. So if you are trying to apply it on a process area which is not mature and not stable, uh, that means you will be frequently making changes to the bot program, which would defeat the purpose of having it. Because that means you might have to um, pay, pay to the vendor or get a staff member to alter this program very frequently, which might not be a best use. And the other um, uh, area of consideration is, are there any decision points within that process where you need to interact with a human? So if you see, if the qu flow of the questions flows through where everything has to be yes, in order for you to say that it is a su potential suitable candidate for RPA-based automation. Whereas for the last question is more of a information to make the, a decision how you're going to automate, whether there is a requirement for human intervention or not, which I will touch upon in, in a later slide, why I said that. So keep this as your guiding principle. When it comes to if you're deciding on a particular area, if you're not sure whether it's a suitable candidate for RPA-based automation or not, please follow this. It helped me, so I'm sure it will help you as well to get that initial um, sort of uh, assessment feasibility done. Then. Um, next level is where you'll have to go into details and see how best you could automate it. Um, this is another um, element which I thought would be um, good for you uh, to share with you to get an idea in terms of how a bot could um, sort of uh, take care of the automation of different processes. So this is just a visual representation of uh, how the different elements work together for an automated solution. So if you see on the left side, um, uh, bubble uh, chart, the top layer is where you have a bot which would run different process areas within your business or with, within your functional area, which these processes have, each of these processes has a different objective to be met. 
maybe um, creating a customer receipt or completing the business reconcil uh, bank reconciliation or, or like you know, um, sort of uh, logging uh, IT service desk calls. So there might be different uh, process objectives. So these process objectives would be met by comprising a logical flow or orchestrator to say, okay, these are the steps that we need to follow in order to achieve this objective. These um, uh, steps then run into different tasks. So for example, if you are uh, saying that we need to complete the bank reconciliation, we might lay down the task and first you need to go and, and download the bank uh, statement and then uh, compare with the uh, payments made, with payments received. So there might be different tasks allocated to it. So then it, for each of these tasks, you will have a set of instructions. For example, if, if I take the task of downloading the bank statement, so where do you uh, download it? Maybe you go to the bank website, log in using ABC credentials, use this particular menu option and say download, save it onto a folder, for example. So these are the detailed step instructions which will compose the bot to follow and complete that task very clearly and consistently. So these instructions has to be clear and precise so that the bot will not fail in terms of this automation. So I think this would give you a fair idea how you could break it down all the way up to the minute level detail steps if you are implementing RPA into a given process area. Um, this is for your information. Um, these are a few of uh, the vendors available in the market today. Um, I would say um, a few popular ones or, or the leading ones. Uh, but then there might be a few other companies as well who has joined the um, particular uh, service industry, but these are some of the um, companies which are offering uh, RPA based automation solutions and the software. Okay, let's look at few um, use cases or, or like scenarios where we um, could apply in a real life uh, automation. Okay, I'm giving you an example in terms of uh, utility bill reconciliation. Let's look at the existing process. So this is how the manual process looks like. Um, the user needs to log into the web portal, navigate and download the bill. You enter the customer number details and then uh, capture the bill information. This is mainly the utility bill details you would download and enter into your uh, ERP application for accounting purposes. So the user downloads it and then download the bill in a PDF into a designated location. You consolidate it and the bill information then it as a purchase uh, uh, voucher in your ERP application. So if, you, if we are looking at, at this is, I have taken a standard a example. So on a typical level, this is a process which might take to a normal user, a human user, roughly about eight minutes in total to complete, to compile and, and come up with this report. So when it comes to an automation using bot or, or RPA, the process doesn't change, the steps are the same. The only difference is that we are documenting these rules into exact steps the bot should follow. But then because of the ability of the software, it is easier to get things done faster. So on average, where a process area, which takes roughly about eight minutes for a normal user, would take here into a bot within about a minute. So it's roughly about, um, by the time a, man, a normal user uh, finishes one um, report, a bot might be able to um, carry out uh, eight or more times. So just to give a rough comparison in terms of, but these uh, timings would clearly depend on the process area that you're looking at and uh, the steps involved in the process as well. So there might be, based on my experience, there had been much more efficiency brought by RPA uh, into the process when it comes to the time saving. Um, one more use case I thought like, you know, let me share with you all. This is on creation of new customers using an Excel sheet, where the users have an um, uh, Excel sheet compiling of the, the new customers who has come on board to the company. This is the manual process where you log into the portal and then create a new customer, then um, open the Excel document, copy and paste one by one, and creating a customer and uh, emailing the details to the uh, head of the department, which roughly takes about 10 minutes in total. Whereas the same step, if we automate it, the same exact steps uh, we are repeating, but then the uh, gain would be much more. The bot might be able to complete it over a minute or, or even less than that. So this is, I just wanted to give you a comparison 
in terms of roughly the gain that you would have. Uh, this is purely on the time saving point of view, not from um, the platform uh, independence and things like that. So the advantage is like, you know, when you're looking at a process area, see how much time, what are the painful points, and then uh, sort of uh, see how best a bot can be deployed and achieve this uh, objective. There's one more poll we have opened up for y'all. If you could attend that now. What can a software robot be likened to? What can you refer to it as? A little over a minute to attempt it. Please take a guess. Based on, I think this I uh, addressed it in uh, at the beginning of my uh, presentation as well. Only 40% of the participants have attempted the waiting for the others to come on board as well. Is it an operational user, a virtual worker, or a business user? What do you think? All right. Um, I see the results. Um, more than 43% have responded saying it's a virtual worker, and then a few have said it's a business user, and some have said an operational user. Um, the correct answer is it's a virtual worker. The um, uh, change of concept here is that it's equal to you having a full-time worker who is readily available for you 24 by 7. Only difference is it's a virtual worker. Even though the activities carried out them by them would mimic the human uh, uh, behavior or uh, what a human would um, do normally, but this is re really referred to as a virtual worker. Right? Now, when looking at uh, uh, RPA-based automation, there are Broadly, three types of automations which um, are presently um, available. Um, I'll take you through briefly on, on what it means and with a simple example. Uh, first is an unattended automation, which means a fully automate by teaching the robot how to do it. So there's no human interaction required in the end to end process. So let me take the same example that I explained to you um, the utility bill reconciliation and show you how this works. So this would be where, um, if it's an unattended automation, that means you can pre-schedule the bot to um, carry out this task at a defined time frame, and the bot program would continuously run. Now in this example, for example, if we say on the 25th of every month by 5.30 p.m., the bot should uh, start this process and complete it, so it will run I mean, uh, continuously without failing unless it is uh, faced with any technical issue or whatever which can be tackled through error handling. So this is unattended automation where the bot carries out the end-to-end -end task without any human intervention. Um, what's the next type? The next type is attended automation. So what does that mean? That means you configure the bot to work together with a human. So whereas some part of the process work would be done by a bot and some part of it, it requires a human to intervene for it to get completed. So I'm taking the same example of the process for clarity. Let's see how it will work in an attended automation. So attended automation, the process steps would be the same, whereas a human worker in this example is initiating the process, requesting the bot to start the process. 
So this will have the option for a human to control the frequency and, and when a particular task can be carried out and the bot would carry out the task. And then uh, uh, another step I have included is when it says download the PDF, it will send it to the human for confirmation and then human would send back the confirmation. So this is a, um, a small example of how an attended automation could be. The last type is a hybrid, hybrid of both attended and unattended uh, automation. So this is another example like, you know, where depending on the uh, scenario and objective you are trying to achieve, you could even look at a uh, hybrid automation. I'm taking the same example again for clarity. Let's look at how a hybrid could work. So we have the process area, and in this case, the bot triggers the work on a predefined frequency. So it starts the program on its own, and then if there are any erroneous transactions, it'll um, send it to the human, and then he, once the human gives the go ahead, it'll complete the process. And at the same time, on an ad hoc basis, the human could initiate uh, a request to the bot saying, please carry out the task. Uh, let's, let, in this example, if I um, give you an example, is that let's say all bills are supposed to be received by 25th of each month, but and the bot is um, carrying out by end, you schedule it for end of day, midnight, to carry out this reconciliation. For some reason, if there are certain bills which are being sent to this company at a latter point due to errors or some clarifications, those ad hoc ones which, which can be processed through this human intervening and making an ad hoc request for the bot to take care of whatever the uh, bills received later. So this flexibility is available for you to um, sort of use it based on the scenario you're trying to apply it onto. So I hope uh, I made it clear in terms of what these three types of automation is because it will be uh, important for you when you're deciding where to implement um, this automation. Just on a um, concluding note, in terms of looking at different uh, uh, automations as well as what to use where. So if, if a, in a process area, a robot and people together can be used in a hybrid, it's usually a powerful combination, but it depends on what you are implementing, where you are implementing for. And the other area is only getting the robots to perform the automation or, or the task within the process, which is quick, consistent, an economic delivery of a repetitive task. So you need to make the right decision at which option are you going to use? Are you going to use robots and people in a hybrid or are you going to go for an um, unattended uh, automation? And the last is you have to be mindful of uh, not to replace people specifically when it comes to a process area which are subjective, which involves subjective decision making, which is low frequency task and also where you have to involve um, management of continuous improvements. So in these kind of areas, don't try to look into implementing robots because then you'll be defeating the purpose. It's more um, sort of, uh, it is uh, recommended to use people for these kind of areas. Okay, um, since all, all of us are coming from uh, PMI and, and being uh, project managers, I thought it's good that to look at what typical steps would involved in an RPA implementation project. This is it would not the steps the in broadly would not change to a, any other IT system implementation project. You would still have the planning, you would still have the execution form in the teams. But then there are a few key things which I thought might be useful to highlight here from a, a business or, or sponsors point of view as well as from a project uh, team point of view, which I will take you through. Uh, in in an RPA project implementation, I think. Uh, identifying the opportunity or, or the area where you're going to implement is a key because that I would say is a make or break decision because if you analyze and identify the wrong area or which would not add value to you that might be a bit of a tricky situation so you'll have to be mindful of um, having few discussions workshops to make sure that it's the right process area for implementation I'm just sharing going to share one of my own experiences where a particular process area was identified as um, RPA and, and a set of business users came to me saying um, they want to implement RPA. But that is involving one staff member uh, compiling certain uh, word uh, reports which is issued by a department and then certain key components of uh, these uh, reports are being extracted and entered into an IT application. So it seems like we, we had about 40 reports a month and a report is about 40 pages. 
So one user is sitting and doing it. So it sort of met all the pre-qualification criteria for RPA automation. But when I went into the details, one thing I noticed, the key thing uh, I noticed is these reports are coming from different subsections are not consistent in terms of the report format. So the bot program, if you are trying to automate it, the defined steps would not be consistent. So for each report type, you would have to have a different set of rules which is defeating the purpose of like you know having multiple programs to be automated to run uh, automation using RPA. So because of that, when you are also trying to identify a particular area, make sure you go deep dive into the process and see the consistency, those pre-qualification criteria. This is repetitive and, and uh, a mature process, things like that, so that you could not go wrong. And uh, the next is, um, I mean, uh, going into the solution design and building where the business, you, you need to get the top management support in terms of direction, managing the cost, things like that. And also, like I said, assist the process very in detail each step of the way that is going to help you out. And also um, couple up with um, the IT security teams um, and, and if possible with the experienced consultant who would come and help you out in defining the processes. IT security is a very key element because this is about access to information and, and depending on where you're gonna install the robotic uh, program, then there are, would be certain security measures you need to implement. So that will be very important. And also end-to-end -end testing of the development to make sure that the steps that the robot is carrying out is as for what you want. And then comes the implementation process. Um, make sure that you have a formal change management process in place. And then uh, also the user acceptance testing Make sure that the users are trained because you, you are introducing a virtual worker into the process. So there will be some element of change management from a uh, user's mindset as well as the overall entry and business process. And then comes the uh, uh, post implementation uh, um, stage where you have to make sure that you keep on driving a digital cu culture because you have stepped into a new um, area and then uh, everybody needs to become on board on this journey. And then ongoing monitoring of this uh, bot activity, um, it, whether you are facing any issues, error handling, and how best you could um, sort of enhance the program, as well as any other potential areas that you could sort of um, replicate this particular process, how you have done the automation. So these are some of the key things I thought uh, to share with you in terms of if you are happen to um, look at RPA as a project or, or will be in charge of an implementation, which might give you some sense of how to drive the project. A um, few critical success factors, which I thought, um, based on my own experience of uh, um, implementing RPA and, and few other tools, the first rule is to make sure that focus on the problem that you're trying to solve, not the technology. This is not only the case of implementing RPA, when it comes to any technical implementation, because now the world is moving towards this uh, digitized environments. Companies are talking about digitally transforming the businesses. So it, it's easy for uh, people to get uh, lost in which technology to use. Um, for example, um, another example that um, from my own experience is another um, area which um, a set of users uh, wanted to implement RPA on is um, the section has a predefined report, which is uh, crunching a lot of data from different applications and then uh, uh, creating this report in a particular given format, which was a very time consuming task. Whereas uh, one dedicated member was working on, on a uh, one day full time just to come up with this report. So they were um, like, you know, wondering whether RFPA could help them to solve it, to have this report generated at a faster pace. But then when I went into this detailed steps of how it's been done, what are the, uh, systems that, that they are being tapped in and this detailed process, then yes, there was some automation required, but RPA was not the solution. We, we could, um, we, we managed to give a solution using an automated report, which is all with some additional triggers and things like that to solve that problem. So just a simple example to say that when whatever the um, uh, problem that you're gonna solve, first give focus to the problem and what's your objective, what are you trying to, achieve through that, then look at what is the uh, preferred uh, or the most suitable solution for that um, problem. And also in, in when it comes to RPA, having a detailed end-to-end -end process focus 
and knowing the minute level of steps is critical. So make sure that you do that um, uh, uh, with due care so that you could assess it properly. Otherwise, there, it would result in multiple iterations, changes to your program, and, and might uh, add to your cost and time uh, budget. And design of the to be process uh, in compliance to the existing policies. This is another important aspect because you are add, adding a digital workforce into your um, team or, or your company. So it, this is equivalent to having any other staff member. So having a, a unique uh, user ID password for them to log in. And then what are the roles that, and, and the responsibilities you have assigned? And uh, make sure like things like uh, segregation of duties um, are, are being implemented. Why I'm saying that is an example is, let's say that you are assigning a bot to generate a payment. So um, based on a particular input, the bot goes and generate a payment uh, within the system on your, on your accounts payable. And then um, you need to have the maker checker control, which is one person is uh, creating the payment, one person is approving it in an IT application. So you cannot assign both these tasks to a bot just as part of an automation. That is going to be a conflict. So make sure that existing IT policies are taken into account and then when you're implementing um, bot program. And last is, uh, I think I highlighted in the previous slide as well, is to involve the IT security team because um, uh, the logical access controls as well as any uh, security, cyber security concerns, things like that, depending on your implementation, where it's going to lie, as well as what applications you're going to um, touch base, it's important that to have the IT security team, if possible, um, the technical audit teams within your organization, so they could give you some guidance in terms of the steps that you are going to follow, we are going to implement. It could, they could help you out in sort of sorting out those things. It's very critical because um, based on my own experience, like there was a program that we implemented where the bot is receiving emails from the end users to trigger the um, process. Uh, and then uh, we had to make sure that the bot only opens emails received from a designated email addresses only simply because any spam emails coming in, any hacking attempts uh, coming into the targeted to that email account should be avoided. So things like that, it's very critical that you uh, involve your IT security teams in the process. So with that, we come to the end of my presentation on RPA. And I think uh, we are ready to open up the floor for a few questions that you all have posted. Okay, um, there's one question which says, what is the difference between a computer program, background job, and RPA? Because both are, do, are going to execute repetitive tasks. Okay, the key difference here is that um, it's uh, platform independent, like I said. So unlike a, a computer program that you would be um, sort of uh, having automated, which might, uh, you will have to each time when you're trying to introduce a new application, you will have to do certain coding in it. Whereas uh, on an RPA program, you could uh, do it easily and it doesn't need quite a lot of, uh, what do I call it, uh, coding to be done or programming to be done. And the other thing is the uh, efficiency in terms of uh, how it will uh, swap between two or three applications to get your objective done. And the other thing is that a bot can operate on multiple process area. Let's say it might run an accounts payable uh, job within your Oracle ERP. While uh, simultaneously, uh, depending on the scheduling, it, might, it can run on your HRMS related to payroll and, and maybe on your CRM related to customer complaints. So these are the key differentiators, as I see, which would um, sort of uh, uh, demarcate RPA to a normal program. Um, uh, there's another question is, is RPA like QTP, uh, which is a quick te test professional or any other test automation tool? Um, I'm, I'm not very familiar with QTP, but looking at the uh, test automation, I, I uh, assume that you would give a set of instructions to follow. So if so, in RPA, the only um, difference would be the instructions can be uh, very exhaustive and also it can um, sort of uh, go between manual documentation like Word, Excel, PowerPoint, as well as uh, interact with automated applications as well. So that's the key differentiator that I see. 
another uh, question is siri alexa google can be called as rpa no because siri alexa um, and and google they these are um, artificially intelligent um, sort of software which is running on um, like uh, maybe natural language processing uh, a methodology a tool called uh, call natural language processing which is a, a sort of a different um, tool altogether whereas rpa doesn't have any intelligence built to it like i addressed in my uh, presentation so it's it's more of like you give us a set of instructions um, imagine as you've got a new staff member or a trainee coming in you have a set of uh, steps from 1 to 20 listed down where the staff is supposed to sit down and work on a terminal just follow that steps so it will not have any intelligence or thinking to put on on its own just follow simple the instruction so that's the main difference Um, one is how this program RPA can be initiated. Is it using manual command or verbal? Um, verbal, no, but manual, yes. Like I said, like, um, I addressed the types of automations uh, within an RPA uh, process. So wherever that you um, sort of uh, have attendant or a hybrid uh, automation, you could uh, get a human to initiate or give a manual command. So this command can be um, a click of a button or maybe you send an email to a designated email address where the bot knows then the program needs to initiate so this email can be in a defined uh, format let's say the same bot is handling two different process areas so for each process you can have a defined format saying okay uh, then the bot program will be like if the email heading is saying abc it knows it's supposed to initiate process one Whereas um, if the heading says something else, it knows, okay, it's supposed to handle the next process. Okay, another uh, interesting question is, do you expect RPA to replace a lot of employees leading to large scale unemployment in future? Well, there is a challenge there. I think um, this is a, uh, coming a lot, not only with RPA, any digitization, the digital transformations happening around uh, is, is having a bit of a challenge for employees. Uh, in terms of the when the um, bots are doing things more efficiently how it's going to impact so there will be some impact to the employees but then at the same time uh, i guess it gives an opportunity for the um, supervisors or, or the management to look at how best you're going to utilize the existing employees based on their capabilities into areas where in which involves judgment that is from a management point of view but on employees point of view i think it's uh, posing posing a, a challenge on us uh, in terms of upskilling ourselves like you know knowing what these new technologies are how could you work around those things how can you adopt it so i i guess it, it will have to strike a balance to make sure that like you know, we stay up to mark in terms of this uh, knowledge on what's going on but yes uh, there to certain job roles might uh, get replaced Um, there's another question saying, hi Anjana, can a bot log into a secure internet banking platform to download, for example, accounts data to reconcile with an ERP? Yes, because uh, like I said, this is equivalent to you have a, um, having a, um, a dedicated staff member doing this. Only difference is that you will have a unique user ID password to the user, uh, the virtual user or the bot. And uh, the steps will include, okay, um, that this bot, would access to these these um, uh, web portal download whatever the steps involved in carrying out uh, reconciliation. But the uh, only thing is then from uh, uh, the banking portal point of view as well as the ERP application point of view, it needs to enable access to this designated virtual worker or the bot. So if as long as that can be done, yes, it can perform the task. Okay. The other pro, uh, there's another question saying, as mentioned in the beginning, that RPA is platform independent, but to develop a software program, there should be some platform required to do the programming uh, and write algorithms. What are those? Okay, so this this is where I, I was I mentioned to you um, the vendors were offering this uh, bot software. That is the uh, software we will be using in terms of uh, building the logic and uh, building the bot program. But this program has the ability to sort of give directions to this bot to go and uh, 
open up uh, web pages to the, the list of things that a bot is able to do. So depending on that, it can perform. So it's um, the coding of uh, uh, the bot program some, is looking like something like a Visio diagram in the back end. So it's a little bit of a very uh, comprehensive one, but it's, if you think of a simple Visio diagram where you have a start and end, and then certain if then statements going on, it's something like that where you code and each of the step, you would define what uh, information to use. For example, if I'm um, touching based on the previous question that was asked whether a bot can access a um, internet banking a portal, yes, then we need to specify in those steps on the bot program, what is the URL to use and what is the user ID and password to use to log in. So where, and then comes the IT security concern in terms of how are we going to encrypt this because that's going to be in the what program, the banking application user ID password, and then who can access to this uh, program. Things like that we need to take into account. So I hope I answered that question. Yes, the platform used for that is the bot software, which is offered by companies like UiPath, uh, Blue Prism, Automation Anywhere. Uh, is RPA similar to Selenium? Yes, that, that is another uh, tool um, or, or a vendor who is offering RPA uh, software. Um, there's another question, so what are the limitations of RPA bots and what are the fallback methods and procedures, especially in service industry? Um, like I said, RPA is a uh, bot which does not have any intelligence of its own. It just simply blindly follows the instructions given to it. So um, the fallback methods are, are in terms of like, you know, if there are any errors, we need to define in the event, um, let's say the bot program is supposed to uh, log into a application and the application is not available or the password has expired. So how are those steps gonna be handled needs to be inbuilt into the program. That's why I said each minute level step of that particular process, your automating needs to be assessed in order for you to identify what are the fallback mechanism in the event a particular step cannot be completed. Let's say if it cannot be completed, what would be the error handling mechanism? Is it going to be at the program coming to a complete standstill? Are you going to initiate any email or SMS mechanism to somebody in charge to have a look at it? So it's like a normal staff member. If, if I'm supposed to um, sort of log into a system and, and create a report, and if I cannot do it, then next is maybe you call IT help desk or somebody. So like in a similar way for the virtual worker, we need to define what are the steps gonna be. And um, when it comes to the service industry or any industry for that matter, like I said, you need to see what is the problem you're gonna solve? What are you trying to achieve? If it's something like where you want uh, customers to come and interact with a bot, that might, might not be the best solution when it comes to let's say customer grievances or like, you know, Checking on satisfaction levels might not be unless it's a defined set of um, you know pick uh, best option out of three something like that. If it involves some judgment, if you um, want somebody um, to listen to a customer and give a solution, then no. But if you have any um, process areas which is repetitively, continuously going on the same number of steps in the same order, those are things that you can automate. So a question, can we say what a typical ERP software is? Roughly a set of RPAs. No, uh, if I understand this correct, uh, question correctly, can we say that a typical ERP software is roughly a set of RPAs? No, because um, it serves a different purpose because within the ERP, um, like you, know, you would have certain modules and, and certain reporting, different uh, process areas being handled. RPA, I would suggest for you to use when it comes to something that you cannot address um, with a typical ERP application or where you have a challenge uh, coordinating with uh, two um, applications, things like that. So you need to see what, what the objective is gonna be and what you're trying to achieve. But definitely it might not be a, um, replacing an ERP or a complex IT application in place. Um, I guess with that, we come to an end um, with the Q&A session as well. Uh, um, so thank you very much for everybody and we look forward to your uh, feedback.
let us know how we can improve um, our future webinars going forward and specifically on the content covered i would i look forward to your feedback as well and uh, yeah do keep in touch thank you very much